In this episode of OG55, we're talking about Disneyland Resort. Can it ever really truly become a more of a bigger uh, tourist draw? I think Disney definitely wants that of this property, but can it accomplish that? We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk a little bit about Pandora and the logistics and the ramifications as to putting this land in DCA and much, much more on this episode of OG55. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. I got the one. I got the only. Spider-Man, Mr. Weba is in the house today, back, freshly back from saving the city. Weba, it's always good to have you on, brother. <laughs> OG55, thank you, sir, for having me on. I cannot wait to discuss these uh, awesome, fun topics with you uh, today. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's dive right in, brother. Okay, so... We'll start off with let's start off with this this idea of like Disneyland Resort becoming more of a tourist destination. This has been kind of the idea for Disney really since like 2001 when DCA came online. They kind of revamped that resort district area, you know, Harbor Boulevard, all that stuff to make it look a little more resorty. Um, they added the Grand Cali. You know, they tried to do this DCA 1.0 at least was pretty underwhelming. So. They kind of had a you know change change course, um, and honestly, in honor of James Earl Jones, I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. They had to alter the deal, and they had to start giving heavy discounts and stuff because DCA 1.0 really wasn't cutting it. But it's improved since then, obviously. But Disneyland Resort still isn't the the tourist destination that I think that Disney wants it to be. So I want to I want to ask you, Webb, but what are your thoughts on this? Like, what what do you think is holding Disneyland Resort back from accomplishing this, and what can what can they do about it? Um, I think <laughs> honestly, I mean, I think honestly, it's the size. I mean, given that okay, so given that the fact we have two parks, size right, matters. Emma, size, <laughs> matter. size does matter. <laughs> OG fifty five experience. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Size matters. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! We're off to a great. We're off to a great start, Reba. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, okay. So right, so you look at Walt Disney World, right? I mean, Walt Disney World Resort is pretty much like its own city, basically, yeah. right? <laughs> and of course, at Disneyland, you know, you do have people who do come from like you know different countries, right? Like I've seen some people from Australia, India, right? All these other different type of countries they come to the park because Disneyland's super well known, famous, right? Uh, people love it. At the same time, though, you know, like Ken Pot Rock in one of the um for the Disneyland Forward stuff, he was saying that they want to make the Disneyland Resort a multi-day, multi-night experience, which sounds like Walt Disney World in a sense, right? They want people to stay there for multiple nights. But that also means, too, you got to have more hotels, right? Yeah. With the, like, like, you, you want to create that Disney bubble. And Disneyland has it, but it's pretty, it's small. It's not huge like Walt Disney World's where you can, like, leave the park but you're still on property right yeah. here you leave the park you know you're besides downtown disney once you leave you're like out of the bubble you yeah. know so i think in order to accomplish this you know with disney Forest can be a great move because then like you know you can expand the parks and whatnot um and then of course having the toy story lot they can do something with that in the future but i think honestly if they were able to expand their footprint like buy it i know people will hate this but buy it more areas and then expand onto those you can have a more bigger destination for people to fly in. Yeah. Now, oh, go ahead. No, that's a great point. And and, and if they if they want to, like, because now we have this Disneyland Forward stuff approved, ready to go, <clears throat> they can kind of tap into, like you were saying, Eva, with the um, expanding that footprint. A perfect opportunity for that would be maybe in 15, 20 years from now, not now, but eventually, um, adding that third gate over in the Toy Story lot. And with that third gate, you kind of justify another hotel and that would sort of bring it into more of a resort area as well you know you're absolutely because then you're you're adding like, even downtown disney you know, you're adding sh uh, shopping dining um and maybe other type of activities right and of course the thing that's really difficult with disneyland also as well is that there's a ton of good neighborhood hotels 
right? There is. And, and a lot of them uh, ha- mm-hmm. have guests that go to the park. Yeah. So then it's like, that's the hard thing is, because I know Disney, Disney's like on this DVC, like, high right now. They want to put DVC everywhere. Yeah. And, um, but I think it's going to be kind of a challenge trying to decide, okay, if we expand Disneyland in any type or the Disneyland Resort in any type of capacity, how many hotels should we actually have? Because we still have all these good neighbor hotels, which are actually a lot cheaper. Like they, I, they are. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you right now, I will not stay on property at Disneyland. It's too expensive, and the experience for what it is, it's not worth it in my opinion. I hey, think that's, I- <clears throat> that's fair. That's fair. Hey, you, you and I, um, the Italiano and 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 Slimer, right? We stayed yeah. at the Motel Six Anaheim Main Gate, which is like just right down Disney Way. You know what I'm saying? We we're all staying there. We had a blast. Really nice, though. I know people think Motel 6, oh, man, you know, how to get out of there without any, yeah. any, gun, any gunshot wounds, you know? No, <laughs> it was actually really nice. It was really nice. But, you know, you have this within walking distance of the resort, and you're paying, what, 80 bucks a night? Compare that right. to any of the Disney hotels, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because, seriously, once you have a hotel on property, right, that's going to up the cost a lot because you're you're paying to stay in the bubble, you know? So, and of course, to have that Disney experience all around you, right? And this includes if you, in the future, expand the parks to then include the hotels in the park. Now you're going to even have more of a high cost. Right. And so I think that it's really the size. Now, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, it is really the size of Disneyland that is that is why it's not on the touristy uh, level as Walt Disney World. Plus, if you look at Disneyland, it's centered in a huge, uh, it's centered in a major kind of city, Anaheim. Right. So there you're going to have a lot more people who live closer to the proximity of the park who go there more often than, let's say, Walt Disney World. I know it's in Orlando, but, you know, you have you have really like neighborhoods just down the street. Oh, yeah. And 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 Southern California, we have so many people like, you know, it's what much more populated and condensed. So that's a huge element. That's that's probably one of the biggest elements. Um, I completely agree with you, Eva. Another thing that I that I've been saying for a while too is I think if you want to sell Disneyland Resort as a world class resort, <clears throat> this is my opinion. And I, I swear to God, Eva, every time I say this, I get somebody in the comments and they get mad. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. <laughs> exactly, but it's how I feel. It's how I feel, and I could be wrong. This is how I feel. I think when you're trying to sell the resort as a resort, as a world class destination, and you drive up and you see a giant Ferris wheel. And very amusement parky things kind of looming outside of DCA, you know, honestly, kind of is reminiscent that, of stuff that you would see like at a Knott's Berry Farm down the road, right? And Knott's is a great park. I love Knott's. Uh, very charming, awesome place, but it's very much an amusement park. It's very much a, well, it's a theme park, but it's very much a locals kind of, of, of park, you right. know? And when you drive past, you know, the resort, and you see these giant, and we see the giant Ferris wheel. You see the, the coaster and things like that. It just gives off a very locals vibe. I think if you if Disney and I know they're not going to do this, I think if they were to get rid of Pixar Pier and replace it with something world class, I'm talking like on par with a Galaxy's Edge or a Pandora or a Cars Land or a Disney Sea Harbor, whatever they want to replace it with. I think that would change not only the reputation and the optics of DCA, but even the entire resort. Because now you have both parks heavily themed, heavily immersive. You don't have these very locals, lo- local park looking things kind of looming out of the of the of the resort. And here's the thing: they probably will never do it because, from what I understand, and the numbers could have changed, but from what I understand, the last thing I heard a few years ago is the the Ferris wheel. Uh, the the Pixar Pal around at DCA is one of the most Instagram places on on Earth. I mean, yeah, it, I, 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 I'll tell you, I tell you this, like, OG, I know that you despise Pixar Pier, but oh, I tell yeah. you this, I, I I I like the look of it. I think it looks really nice, and at night it is beautiful at nighttime with all the lighting, because you know, we all because we all know Disney has beautiful light packages all the time, pretty yeah. much. So it's gorgeous. So yeah, it's very Instagrammy, very Facebooky, Snapchatty, whatever other addy. <laughs> media thing you want to do right it's yeah. it's it's very picturable you know um but to your point though about you know seeing these type of attractions in there i want to also maybe not push back but have a maybe another side to it right do yeah. you think do you think this kind of concurs to the point with where 
it's just really seeing the attractions themselves literally like uh, right on the street because when you're driving up to like Disneyland to turn on Harbor, you, you really have Gal uh, Guardians, the huge building just right there, almost at the edge of the, like a public street, right? Yeah. So do you think that's an, like an issue, uh, an issue of like, of like uh, <laughs> not optics, but like um, uh, uh, sight lines where it, where, 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 where like they're not kind of trying to cover the the it, the park from the outside of the from the outside world. Yeah, I think it. I think what it does is I think it kind of. I think you're right. It kind of diminishes in a lot of ways the mystery of these places. Like you know, you want to be able to sort of like. I, I think that I think that I don't mind seeing like things like the Matterhorn popping up like from the distance. You know, that kind of right. gets you curious. Yeah. But like you said, when you see Mission Breakout like literally right up against that bus load unload. Mm -hmm uber area kind of like it's not too far from that it, it kind of diminishes um i hate to say this word because it's kind of become so cliche but like it, it loses the magic in a lot of ways and the mystery even more importantly so that that's a great point if you were to have it more enclosed and it's much more of um of a of a of a mystery to guess when they pull up i think that would benefit absolutely dca suffers from this i think far more than disneyland yes and not to get because I know we'll, we'll talk about Pandora, but kind of going into that real quick, that's another issue of mine of where Pandora is going. Like, you know, if Pandora does go into the kind of bus load Hollywood bus load area, right, is with that amazing concept art, it looks beautiful. But then how's that going to look uh, like literally on this, like right when you're on that street looking at, at that? huge structure right like how's that gonna look well that's right. the thing because they're not at least lately i mean cars land even galaxy's edge lately yeah. disney will do these immersive lands like i said with galaxy's edge or cars land and it looks great when you're in the park right but how does cars land look from outside the park if you look at the exactly. back side of cars land it's not great and you know also galaxy's edge too it's just you see all the back side of it and it's just like Oh, uh, but I think that's where with, with Disneyland Forward, they had that stipulation where they wanted a 360 type of uh, a theme, right? To where it, it, both sides are covered, not just the one side. Yeah, I do remember. You're right. I do, Now that you bring that, I do remember that, uh, Eva. They, di they did have something to that effect. So hopefully we do see some of that being um, utilized here for DCA, you know? Yeah. So it's interesting, but you know, another thing too, that I think would really go a long way with, with kind of incentivizing tourism. I see a lot of deals for Southern Californians or Californians in general, California, yeah. um, uh, you know, discount tickets, things like that. Right. I would like to see Disney kind of lean into maybe some more deals for like out of staters, international guests, you know what or, I'm saying? Or also too, how about more deals for like people in the military? And their families that would be cool yeah if they don't offer that now they should definitely do that absolutely you know it pays pays honor to the service um yeah, cause, but, right yeah because I, I know that i know that uh or at least when i was a kid you know because my dad was in the military mm -hmm. uh you know my mom you know we would get design tickets on base if we didn't have passes and on the base right the, the tickets were you know um were cheaper right but i'm not sure how many times i've seen Disney or at least Disneyland do like military discount tickets, right? Because I see that like at SeaWorld and of these other theme parks where they have like, oh, service members get a day in free and, you know, cheaper tickets for your family and all this other stuff, right? I think Disneyland should probably, if they want to attract more tourists, like you're saying, have more deals for the tourists coming. Yeah. Because oh, absolutely. Who's, who's not local? It doesn't live here. Yes, exactly. It, that's what always boggled my mind. You want, you want to have more tourists, but all the deals that I see are for Californians and that's not a bad thing. I mean, you should absolutely have deals for Californians yeah. when you need to kind of offset some of the, some of the year that maybe the tourism is a little bit light, but I never see deals for people that are out of country or, or out of state or anything. It always seems like locals driven. And I think if they really want to incentivize, they should really get on that. And I think it would, it would go a long way. I think a lot of people would, would consider that, you know? Yeah. Now, well, here's the thing too. If they're going to do that, they shouldn't, just do because you know with the SoCal thing, it's always almost for summer or, or sometimes even September. It's like, oh, you know, uh, buy a three day ticket to get to have it cost X amount, right? Well, what yeah. about if you do like you know a buy to get one free or or something like that, right? Where you have these other type of deals because it, let's face it, you you look at every other theme park, 
uh, or amusement park, and they always have these great deals, right? Like I said, buy two, get one free, or whatnot, or buy one and get $30 off, whatever, right? You get these deals. Yeah. Disney, I rarely ever see that, at least from Disneyland. <laughs> you know, I ever see that. Yeah. And, you know, I know that we always talk about Disneyland or Disney being the premium park, premium experience, right? Which I 100% agree with. <laughs> But at the same time, though, and I and I do the, want to talk about the, the premium experience. Evan? The premium experience. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Um, and you know, and like, hopefully one day we can talk about this. But how Disney and even Universal are more so, even though we all love the parks mm -hmm. this much and whatnot. They're actually not the norm, really, if you compare them to all, all the theme parks and amusement parks in the way they operate, you know, the kind of deals, like for tickets that they hand out, right? Um, but you are paying for that premium experience. So I do agree with you that, you know, like it's, prob it's probably size, you know, it's size, ticket deals, you know, for, for, for more people. And hell, I've even seen sometimes theme parks uh, doing stuff for teachers and whatnot, stuff like that, or first responders, right? Like, you know, where's all these deals for from Disney on this? Yeah, no, it's well, a great, yeah, absolutely. A encourage it and encourage it. You know, you're you're out of state, you're, you're coming from, I mean, out of country, you're coming from Australia or something, yeah. you know, let, like, incentivize those people to come to Disneyland. Because here's the thing too, Eva, a lot of people from out of out of country, uh, you, you're like Europe, um, Japan, uh, Australia, whatever. A lot of people have this mindset of like, if I'm going to go to the United States, I'm going to go to Florida because people have this mi misconception of like Florida is bigger and like there's more to do and th stuff like that. And there is a lot to do in Florida, but Disneyland Resort, while we are smaller, we do have a lot to offer that's very unique to us, you know, but a lot of times we get passed over. You know what I'm saying? So a good way to sort of prevent that would be, like you were saying, give some of these deals out to some of these out-of-country international visitors. So maybe instead of going, hey, you know what? Disney World is so big with all these resorts, but Disneyland Resort has these deals for us. Let's go ahead and try Disneyland Resort. Let's see what they have to offer, you yeah. know? Well, on top of that, right? Like a lot of times when people from other countries, um, let me give Australia, for example, when you're paying stuff in the U, when you're buying stuff in the U.S., it costs you more money because the U.S. dollar is stronger. True, very, very true, sir. Yep, absolutely. So there's that as well. Yeah, and and it, it, it got taken account hotel stay, travel costs, food, tickets, right, and then any you know the lightning lane crap, right? You got to take account all this, all this stuff that that you have to save up more because because when it converts to the u.s it's you know the dollars here are stronger so it's like you're paying a lot more out of from your own currency yeah no that's a fantastic point that's a fantastic point you're channeling your inner seymour duck with the financial <laughs> <laughs> i love it, I love duck. it. <laughs> shout out to mr seymour duck who recently had a birthday by the way we got a you know a happy birthday to mr seymour duck happy belated birthday it was a few days quack, ago quack. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> but um but you know th this kind of brings us to our next topic too which is kind of related because we're talking a lot about dca which is pandora right um we're, we're getting pandora it's gonna be a land we got the concept art we're getting a cool boat ride we got the concept art for that over at d23 from tomorrow now we but we still don't know where it's gonna go um i don't even know if disney knows <laughs> I don't know. Right? We'll see, right? No, but um, the rumor is is Hollywood Land. It might replace Hollywood Land completely, or a big chunk of Hollywood Land. Um, the other rumor is it might go into the Simba lot, which is basically just a parking lot where you pretty much have a blank canvas at that point. But it's across the street. Like you got to build a bridge, kind of similar to what we have with Downtown Disney. You got to build a bridge from DCA proper to that Simba lot, right? So it's a lot more work. You know, you got to go over Disneyland Drive. Right now, the leading rumor from the community and and just people is 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 it's going to replace Hollywood Land. But here's the thing, and this is what I want to pick your brain about, Eva. Mm -hmm. If it replaces Hollywood Land, we now we already know they're getting rid of the red car trolley, right? We already know that th that's they 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 confirm that, right? They're getting rid of the trolley barn. The red car is going away. Mm -hmm. So that kind of signaled to me, and I've talked to um, Italiano about this on the channel um, a few times now. Um, and Dave from Fresh Bay, we talked about it with the, vi with the video I did with him. But <clears throat> that signals the red card going away, which if the red card is going away, that also sort of points in the direction of Pandora going into Hollywood land. Okay, even beyond the red card, though, 
look at the ramifications. If you were to completely get rid of Hollywood land, what do you do with the parade route? You don't, if you get rid of this whole area, you don't have that section of the parade. Now, now you have to reroute the parade, go through cars land or go through some other way. You know, um, you also have to figure what are you going to do with the theme of California adventure? Like if you just have Pandora just plop down right there in that area with no explanation as to why it's in this park about California, do you keep the name California? You know, so there's a lot of question marks here. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Eva? What happens if we get Pandora in Hollywood land or even in symbol lot? What are the ramifications in your opinion? So I've always been the advocate for uh, Pandora going to Simba just because you got a flat service, you have you know flat planes to work with instead of having to tear things down. I mean, you have to tear some stuff down, but not like majorly, right? Like reconstructing right. all of Hollywood Land. Hollywood Land is like the shittiest part in both Disney parks. Like. It is ass, and I hope they get rid of it with something. Right? It's worse than Tomorrowland because at it, least it, Tomorrowland has Space Mountain and some cool rides. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Um, and so, yeah. So I say a parade route, right? I mean, you ideally you want your parade to go through a portion of the park where it's a kind of a straight shoot through a good like at least quarter of the park right because it's, it's going to be on along a, along a pathway where a majority of people can see it right like right. disneyland it goes through main street up through like between the matterhorn and you know where the alice of wonderland is up to through fantasy land and then by it's modeled right so that's that's a good route um dca right if you put it through cars land and then just put it through back through pixar like mm -hmm. that pixar area that's like you're pretty much doing like a horseshoe shape yeah, you, you completely bypass like this whole other end of the park. Exactly, exactly. So I think that would not be ideal for it. Um, and yeah, dude, it's. I don't think they should put it in Hollywood Land. And I'm not saying that it's not possible. It it probably is, but just with the size of it, how it looks, I don't know how they can do it really. And then on on top of that, how is the transition going to look like coming from Buena Vista Street and then into Pandora? It, like, see, that's, that's a huge question mark for me too, Weba. Like, how do you transition this, right? The only thing I can think of, if I put my creative hat on, right, a little bit, the only way you can kind of even finesse this in any way possible would be you utilize the military aspect of Avatar in the front end of the park, in, in the front end of the land that borders Buena Vista Street. So you go off of Buena Vista Street into like kind of like more of a military base. So yeah. it's still kind of urban. You're in a like some military facility or whatever. And then from that military facility, facility you kind of ease your way into the more, um, the, you know, the more organic and kind of the, the natural I say natural, but you know, it's not natural, but the natural yeah. beauty of Pandora. So you go from that military base and then you kind of ease your way into the rock work and the waterfalls that might work, but even that is kind of hard to do, you know? Right. Well, cause it's, it's such a short distance, right? If you do it from yeah. like DCA to the cinema parking lot, that's a good longer transition from that um, theming and environment that you're in to a new theme and environment, right? Going straight from, from Buena Vista street, you know, and then right here literally left and then oh right. we're in pandora now what the fuck you know like how do, you, how do we get here and then on top of that with pandora and going dca like i i think that whether they keep the name dc or not it's now with we just have to i think accept at, at least that we're slowly moving away i know that there is argument og that you know there is a california theme in dca i get that right yeah. But I mean, but I mean, but let's but let's look at Soren. That's no longer Soren over California. It's Soren over the world, you know. And they they bring Soren over to California for like limited time, which by the way is bullshit. Like, why are you going to bring back something for limited time? Just use the original one that was better in the first place. Anyway, um, you know. And so then they they're, they're going to be in Pandora, and, and yeah, you could because they are going to incorporate the other movies, right? Or this this like the third and the fourth one, probably. Yeah, yeah. He they said it's based on the um the way of water and then the ones beyond it. So there could be some California connection, I guess in these new movies, but I, I don't know. Right. You know, at this point, I'm just like ready to accept the fact that they're just going to throw a bunch of IP in this park and that's just what's going to be. And I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, you, I can have a hodgepodge of stuff in here, but at the same time though, it's like, 
I don't know, dude, because you're gonna have Pandora right there in Hollywood Land, and then right next to it, you're gonna have Avengers. Yeah, and that's why I think that if I think that I think we're kind of getting to because here I've been kind of defending the California thing for a long time, yeah. right? Like I've been saying, like, okay, like for me, and this is so subjective, and every, everyone's mileage varies, mm-hmm. but for me, it's like Cars Land. It's Route 66. Yeah. It's car culture. Like for me, that's enough California connective tissue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yeah. enough for me to, to th- that's justified in the park, you know? Yeah. Um, Pixar Pier, it's a pier. It's a seaside pier. That's California. Uh, f- uh, for me, that's fine. You know, yeah. it doesn't take a whole lot to like win me over. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, Buena Vista Street, obviously, very LA. That that works, you know? So and of course, I'm, of course, Grand California. Grand California, yeah. Grand Cali, right? And so these things are, for me, it's like for you know even San Francisco, it's it's a make believe city, but it's enough California inspiration. Yes, I'm good with that. That's enough mm-hmm. for me, right? Pandora, though, like I can't wrap my mind around that. That's that's a bridge too far. Uh, that's like there's no there's no connective tissue there, like none, at least from what we know about the franchise now. You know what I'm saying? Right. So for me personally, if you're going to put Pandora in there and you're not going to explain it as to why it's in a California theme park, then what I would do is I would change the name. I would just say Disney Cinematic Adventure, and then you justify Pandora being there because then basically it becomes Disney's Islands of Adventure. You, you just right. basically – you walk in, Buena Vista Street will be the gateway to all these IP worlds. You know what I'm saying? That's fine for me. Um, it also opens up the floodgates for the, of, of like possibilities too, right? Because I've said for a long time now, I think Frozen at Disneyland, if they were to put it in the um, the Stitch parking lot, feels a little redundant because Frozen is very much a fantasy land property. Yeah. So to have Frozen and Disneyland away from fantasy land, it feel, there's a redundancy there that really irks my OCD, right? <laughs> But here's the thing. If you change DCA to Disney Cinematic Adventure, you can put Arendelle in DCA. Yeah. You can you can put Villains Land in DCA. You can put Villains Land in that symbol lot if you wanted to. You can put Moana in there. You you essentially free up Disney's entire library for DCA now without having to finesse it into this California thing. And if you did Disney Cinematic Adventure, you can still call it DCA. So everyone's well, happy. Exactly, and that's because, again, when you change the name OG to Cinematic, instead of having it in California, you're opening the um, the doors to broader things. Because when you have California, you're now, your scope isn't limited to for California. Right. If you open that up to Cinematic, that's everything that's cinematic in the in the world of studios. So, yep. you know, so so you can use anything at that point, which I think, you know, is I think it sounds like this is the route that they're going. Yeah. And you know, I'm okay with that if that's what they're going to do, but yeah, the whole California thing with Avatar, I agree with you. It's just it's just weird. Um I would rather here's the scene. If they put Pandora in in the Hollywood land, Okay, I mean, I'm not going to be mad at it because we got Pandora, right? And Hollywood's yeah. gone, so and the Hollywood land's gone. It's a piece of crap. So I'm fine with that. But I do think it's it'll be better served in the Simba parking lot. No, I agree with you. I think I think it I think it makes more sense in the Simba lot, at least from what I know now, because Disney's going to want to do like they always do with these big lands, right? These grand reveals, mm-hmm. right? So they do it with Cars Land, like when you go through the. Um, like the San Francisco area yeah. into car, that big grand reveal. Um, they do it with like galaxy's edge. You walk in, Oh my God, look at this. Right. Right. With Pandora. If you did the symbol lot, the fact that you need the bridge to go over Disneyland way, you sort of kind of force that gateway, mm-hmm. you know, that, that grand reveal that they want, like, even like Epic universe is doing with the, with the, with the portals. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good device to use to sort of for immersion and for that first wow response. So having to go from like, you know, say DCA proper, go over that bridge and you, you land in Pandora. It's like, wow, you really right. set that stage up. You're not going to get that in Hollywood land. No, exactly. And so I think that transition would be a lot better if they did it for the symbol lot. Yeah, no, I completely but, agree. I completely uh, agree. And so the other point I also want to make too with Avatar, and this is back to our last conversation about like the tourism thing, was if you put it in Hollywoodland, right? 
And I, I know this could be like an issue for other type of IP lands they want to make here. I think for anything they're going to do, because now modern, like you were saying, modern lands are now kind of big and grand, right? Is right. whatever you put there <laughs> for a land, right? If you extend it from like the start, the part, the start of the street after uh, Buena Vista Street and go all the way back to like the bustled area, what are like what type of facades are we seeing from the public street? at the park well that's the thing like, well they talked about like you said with disneyland forward wanting to do that 360 theming or whatever so hopefully yeah. whatever is on that street side which would be i think harbor right right yes at least just make rock work and just make nice rock work and plant some trees mm -hmm. i think you're good you know what i'm saying but you gotta do something you gotta do something better than what you did for the back of cars land and for what you did for galaxy's edge when you go into the mickey and friends parking structure mm -hmm. and you see the popsicle sticks with the rocks on top you know it's like come on you can we can do better you know what i'm saying right exactly and then you're talking about you know what's like the repercussions of um avatar and again i think this could be anything that goes in that area is if you're going to extend out to the busload area um what what is that going to do with that kind of right that portion where the, where the security at is that in the esplanade how is that going to look when you have the park wrapping around that side? Yeah, I don't really know because you would also have to have – that's also where the Eastern Gateway is going to empty into, right? Right. So we're going to have – the whole, that whole bus load unload area can't be dedicated all to park. Like it can't go all the way in because it would need some sort of pathway yeah. to let these Eastern Gateway people kind of get in, right? Mm -hmm. So – Unless they do some underground shit. I don't know. <laughs> like, but I doubt it. You know, I doubt it. But it's like, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of logistics there that they have to work on. Um, it's going to be interesting. They're going to rework that. I think there's going to be a lot of reworking, I think, also just with the Esplanade in general in the, in, yeah. in the coming years. Because we're seeing a change in how people sort of like buy tickets and what have you. Like back in the day, when I was a kid, you would go up to the to – the, to the ticket booth and you would buy a ticket. Now you don't do that. Now you use your phone or, or everything's on your phone. Like you don't need eight, I think it is, or whatever, seven or eight of those ticket booths. You don't need physical booths anymore. Maybe have a couple, you know, I think you need some, but you don't need that many. So they're going to have to reimagine that whole Esplanade anyway too. Um, so I think we're going to see some big changes here with that, but you're right though, in terms of that Eastern gateway um, and the whole bus load unload area, how is that going to work, you know? See, and this is why I think something like Zootopia or an IP that was more of an urban setting would fit better in Hollywood Land because that way you could still keep um, – I mean, I know they're getting rid of that because they're going to use that whole backside, the storage of the um, of the red car trolley, right, for, like, uh, Avengers Campus, correct? Right. So, but, but maybe if they were to find another way or another station for it in that area somewhere, um, you know, maybe they're able to – keep that if they had another ip in hollywood land to still utilize a trolley i mean it might be different but maybe you can make kind of like a cool i don't know i'm just thinking like a cool hybrid mix of a ip slash you know 1930s style or 1950s style like type of um uh, red, red car trolley thing you know yeah no I, As, I i i really like the idea too of a zootopia i, I said so many times on the channel as well where like you keep that hollywood land urban like a cityscape mm -hmm. but you're just zootopia now and then you can keep your red car trolley it makes yeah. as you know that the the trolley going through zootopia still makes sense right. but now with pandora coming in which and it's looking like it's going to go there because they're getting rid of the trolley I mean, you you know, you, it's it's sad. I love the red car trolley. I, I was when when the pandemic hit and we, and we were, and Disney was coming out of the lockdowns. I was really worried about it. I'm like, oh man, I hope this thing comes back. You know, I was real vocal yeah. about it. And um, I think, see, it's funny because I was more upset back then, and but now I think I've kind of come to terms. We, that's that's we're three or four years out of that now. So yeah. now I kind of feel like. Okay, it's going. I kind of knew it was on borrowed time, and I guess yeah. I've had time to sort of process it. Where, so, but it still sucks. Though I love that thing. I've always loved that thing. I love the kinetic energy it brings to the park. You know, exactly. It's like if you took the. It's, it's like if you took the vehicles off Main Street. Yeah. You know, the horses. You know, but um, I mean, like, it, here's the thing. It sucks. That it's going away. Um, I'm not like I'm like yeah, it really sucks. I'm not too upset about it just because I'm looking for something greater. Uh, that will come after having lost this, right? I mean, that's the. I know people in the community are losing their shit 
their fucking oh. mind over everything right now. But I'm trying to look at the bigger picture. Okay, what's the biggest, best next thing coming to the parks, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and that's also a great point too, Weba, is that – and I think Dave from Fresh Baked made this same point on Twitter. It sucks losing the red car, mm -hmm. but I think what's sort of mitigating the loss is that we're getting a ton of stuff. Like, you know, I mean, look, we're getting Pandora. What, what Honestly, one of Disney Imagineering's, like, most incredible feats was Pandora in Animal Kingdom. Like, one of the most incredible lands they've ever done, right? Mm -hmm. We're getting a version of that in DCA of all places. That's incredible in and of itself. Like, a version of that incredible place is coming to DCA. That's amazing. I love that. We're getting not just one ride in Avengers Campus. We're getting two. Right. And I, and I know that the flight, yeah, too, just like Bob Iger, we're getting two, two. But like, you know, and the flight lab thing, I think is going to be, yeah, I don't think it's going to be anything that's, you know, super like mind blowing, but it's cool right. that we're getting two attractions. I mean, when, we're, when I was at D23 and, and I heard that, I'm like, I was, I was just happy. I was just, uh, happy going into this, uh, um, hearing more about the e-ticket and then to hear we're getting another ride was pretty dope and then add the Coco dark ride on top of that. So yeah. It sucks losing the red car. I want them to keep it because I love it. But at the same time, we are getting a lot. They are actually investing a lot. You yeah. know, D DCA 2.0 was a billion dollar investment. Coco, two Avengers rides and Pandora. I guarantee you that's well north of a billion already. Oh, and also speaking of two, like Coco and Pandora, because I know like a lot of people not complaining, but they're, you're, they are mentioning that Disney's announcing like a lot of like boat rides. Yeah. Here's a, here's the great thing about boat rides, especially for DCA. Okay. DCA, it needs it. It, need, it needs it. It needs some more water, right? Water uh, attractions, but boat rides are very high capacity attractions. Yes. And yes. You, you give them that with great immersive, like, um, theming and story and characters right and also boat rides are also usually pretty long too right pirates is like what 12 minutes it's crazy yeah yeah you know? it's long so you do that for pandora and coco i mean like you're looking at uh, like huge people eaters because if you look at dca a lot of these attractions are not high capacity cars fit six people on it you know um a credit coaster, yeah, I think it has like what twelve cars per train or something like that. So and it, it is a good amount, but like a lot of like the seats together are very small. A boat could fit up to like five or six people. Oh yeah, I, I know it could eat. Right, the capacity is is much better. And on top of that, there's not a lot of rides in DCA. DCA kind of suffers, I think, a lot of the same problem that a lot of the Universal stuff, in my opinion, suffers from, in that it's a lot of like either thrilling. Or like Kitty, you know what I'm saying? But there's yeah. not a whole lot of like those in-between things. Like Mermaid is an in-between ride for yes. sure. You know what I'm saying? Even Racers is sort of in-between. It's not too scary or anything. But DC doesn't have a lot of that. It's either like Mater's or Incredicoaster, right? It doesn't or, have a lot of or, middle ground. Or Jumping Jellyfish, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. You know, So it's nice to get the Coco ride because that is literally an everybody attraction. Mm -hmm. It's nice to get this Pandora ride, which I believe will also be an everybody attraction. It's, it's based yeah. on the Shanghai Pirates. Uh, you know, it's it's a family ride for sure. Yeah. DC and DC needs that kind of stuff. It absolutely needs that kind of stuff. So it, it, it does. So I hope that you know, with the, the with like the red trolley, uh, the red car trolley closing down, and then us getting the two new Avengers rides with the huge with the double in size of Avengers Campus. Again, I just hope that we get Pandora in. Simba, get something else in Hollywood. Um, actually, you know what, dude? In Hollywood, why not bring us the freaking uh, the coaster that um, that uh, Walt Disney World's getting for Monsters Inc. Yeah, I know, and that was rumored. I'm telling you, Eva, that thing has been rumored to go in there in DCA at least since oh god, probably since 2003. Yeah, that was gonna come to DCA, and then they 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 canceled it. Because, see, bro, here's the thing, is that while, yes, you are right, that DCA does have either, like, kind of big, thrilly rides, or then two, like, or two little kitty rides, right? Yeah. Well, I think what they're lacking is, a, it'll, it'll sound weird to say, a bit more coasters, but also more dark ride, everybody rides. Because, look at this one, you got, you at least have, like, what, four? You have Gadget's Go Coaster, Thunder Mountain, uh, S Space Mountain, and then Matterhorn, uh, and then Matterhorn right? So you at least have like four and, and big thunder. And, yeah, yes, yeah, it's a big so big thunder, Matterhorn, gadgets, 
and uh, space. Space. Right. So I think besides maybe space, the others are pretty more mild. Space is, a bit, is one that's a bit more intense. But with uh, DCA, you have one coaster that's like just... And then you have another one where it feels like it's going to throw you off the track. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, where's our, where's DCA's Thunder Mountain? Where's like their, even Gadget's Go Coaster type of coaster, right? Um, now, obviously, the monster coaster that they want to bring is more of an intense coaster because you're suspended, right? I don't think you would go on that, OG. No, but, <laughs> you know, but I, I do think that DCA does need a type of Thunder Mountain y uh, coaster, at least in their, um, in the rides for that park. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and if Pandora goes into um, into the Hollywood Land area, replaces Hollywood Land, you can do that. You can put a heavily themed coaster, you know, in the symbol lot or something, and and yeah, that could that could work. So we'll see. But now speaking of Disneyland, our last and final topic. Let's talk a little bit about Tomorrowland. I want to pick your brain on this, Weba. So D twenty three, you know, we, we're sitting there at the, at the expo. And they were announcing a lot of stuff. I got to say, look, I, I've been very critical of, of Josh Diamaro on this channel for a long time. Um, he had to he had to do the thing at D23. He had to announce stuff, get people excited, and also give fans like a little bit of a timeline because there has been – that trust has been broken, I think, um, yeah. with all the blue sky stuff, you know, that he's been doing. <laughs> and, and also the cancellations and even like the Epcot where they like – they give us a concept and then like it doesn't follow through with the concept. Yeah. So he really had he, – he had a, he, it was a hill to climb for him. And I think he delivered. I really, really do. But Tomorrowland was one of the rumors that once again for the expo. And once again, here we are, stood at the stood up at the altar. We never got it. Um, <laughs> well, I, yeah, never got it. Now, it was heavily focused on DCA, which I do like just because I do think DCA is the park that needs it right now. But Tomorrowland does need it. It's not like that, that land is doing fantastic. What were your thoughts on that and like – was it a good call to kind of put it off? Or do you think that maybe they should have announced it and get going on this thing? See, that's hard. Like, I want to say, like, like I don't want to be the person that's like, who can make up his mind, but I don't think it was a good or a bad call. I feel neutral. on Because I'll tell you this. I do want a announcement made. I'll say that. I do want an announcement made for Tomorrowland for something to happen to it, right? Like, yes, that, here's the thing. That land can still hold on its own right now because it's still always fucking packed. Right, but there are a lot of problems with it. Right, like Buzz Lightyear's, Buzz Lightyear's, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster is not great. I, I will go on it and you know pew pew pew, you know have fun on it, whatever. But right. it's not like the most best thing ever. Uh, you know, Star Tours. We have Galaxy's Edge, then we have Star Tours. Right, I mean, figure that one out. And then we have Space Mountain, which is fantastic. We have a theater that's not even really being used. No. Then we have Launch Bay, which sucks ass. And then we have Autopia. And um, I do apologize for people who love Autopia, but I think it should go away. It takes up so much real estate of like land there. I agree. Um, so I think most of the park can be redone. And so here's the thing. When there was an announcement, I was slightly disappointed. Here, let me say this. I wasn't disappointed in Josh at all. I thought he did great. I thought Disney did great of all the announcements they did at D23. It's fantastic. I was only slightly with not hearing anything about um, Tomorrowland just because for two reasons. One, uh, because of that we know with like the Autopia um, electric thing coming. I'm not saying that is an indication that they will announce something, but because I was thinking, okay, they're going to invest a little more into the attraction. Maybe they have other ideas for investment for the land as a whole later down the line, right? Right. Um, and then the other thing was uh, Tokyo is going to be redoing their entire Tomorrowland. So I was thinking, well, okay, so obviously Disney wouldn't know this, and maybe that might kind of kick him in the ass a little bit to be like, hey, maybe we should, you know, uh, look at doing redoing our Tomorrowland, right? Uh, so I was kind of, okay, maybe like we might get something that would be really exciting, and we didn't, but you know what? Like I said, I thought this is one of Disney's best D23, so like in, in, a, in a good while or if ever. Uh, yeah. So I'm not so I'm not disappointed with it. Uh, just not like not hearing any news about Tomorrowland, which is kind of like a bummer. Um now with uh, Astro Orbiter, I want that to go back on top of where that. What is that thing up on top over there? With oh, the used to be the, the it's officially it's the Orbitron. Okay, the Orbitron. So I want that right to go back up there because it creates a bottleneck at the entrance of Tomorrowland. So put that, get that back up there. Plus, it makes it more scary for people because you're up higher, right? Yeah. Uh, please do something with the people mover track, whether it's the people mover or something else. Please do something with it, like. 
because that added connect energy to the park, like you said, right? Um, and then Buzz Lightyear, get rid of it. Like, why? Why do we have that? Uh, Launch Bay, get rid of that. Put another like here's the thing. Put a really cool dark ride in yeah. um, Tomorrowland, right? Because here's the thing: we have a coaster, we have a simulator, we have a Autopia, which is an outdoor you drive the car ride. Then we have this really kind of crappy Buzz Lightyear shooting dark ride. You know, yeah. I mean, pretty, I'm pretty much you look at you have you, Tomorrowland is great in the sense there is a variety of type of attractions. Right. So I think what we can do is get a really cool indoor dark ride in there in um, in Tomorrowland. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, no, I think I think too with Tomorrowland, I think they might be, and this is just pure speculation on my, on my part. But after seeing, because we were at the studio panel at the expo as well, and Fantastic Four looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, but it has very much a um, retro future, 1960s kind of future that like that Tomorrowland very much yeah. is trying to go for. So I'm wondering if they're waiting on Tomorrowland to kind of see how Fantastic Four does. And maybe they'll incorporate some sort of new Fantastic Force, uh, uh, maybe e-ticket or something in Tomorrowland. That would be kind of cool. Um, another thing they could do is if they wanted to, they could wait until Disneyland's 75th anniversary which would be in what five years from now, roughly um, they could do 75 and maybe, maybe on the 75th, they can announce a new tomorrow. Obviously you can't open it by then because they need to start now, but you can announce it on the 75th and then kind of go from there. How'd that be like your springboard? Right. After you finish this five years of, of, of investment, you know, we'll see. And that would make sense because here's the thing, right? Is OG throughout all these past like decade, right up to now, We've seen we have seen Disneyland Park get upgrade after upgrade to all current lands. Tomorrowland is literally like the last thing I like that needs to be like updated. Yeah. And here's the thing: all their projects they announced at this D23 finished in five years. Right. So that that five year time frame, OG, we can be looking at something with Tomorrowland. Right. So if if like Josh said at the expo. Everything we announced today will be finished within five years, right? So, okay, so in five years from now, which would be Disneyland seventy fifth, you would you would you would then have to have another set of announcements. Yeah. What better to kick off the seventy fifth and say, you know what, we're redoing our Tomorrowland, something that fans have wanted forever, and you do it on Disneyland's seventy fifth anniversary. Such a yes. huge milestone. It is, but but here's my question to you, OG: Is that is it good to have? A Marvel property at Disneyland when you already have a land dedicated to it in DCA. Yeah, and that and that's the big question, and I agree with you because I do have OCD. I joke around about it, but I actually, I actually, I actually, I actually really do. I have that issue, like with the with Star Tours, that bugs the crap out of me. That's not in the Star Wars area. That drives me nuts. You know what I'm saying? So there is an element of that for sure. Like, okay, you have a Marvel land, and now you're going to have Fantastic Four over here in Tomorrowland. It's an issue. The problem though with Tomorrowland is they don't have a lot of big IP they can put in there. That's the thing. Yes, it, because. It, if you take Marvel off the table, you take Star Wars off the table, what do you got? Tron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so, right? I guess right. Tron. And hopefully that new Tron movie does really well. It looks pretty well, dope. But we'll well, see. actually, you know what? That will work, right? Because um, because Tron is, or at least some of the stories about AI, right? Oh, I, I, I think I, so. Like, like, like the computers and AI. I mean, we live in the age of digital computers and artificial intelligence and all this stuff. They can really utilize that IP actually in Tomorrowland. Now, I know that the aesthetic of the new Fantastic Four would look great in Tomorrowland, right? Because yeah. it's like this, because it's like that always looking to the future type of um, image that we had back like in the '60s and whatnot, right? So um, the problem was, like I said, is like the IP. Like, what IP? can you put for all the, all these parts in inside the park yeah because tomorrowland and i think that's also another reason why they held off on tomorrowland right now because mm -hmm. all the other stuff that you're doing like for example dca right right look at the properties that you're that you're messing with you're doing marvel which is still a massive ip i mean it's it's hugely successful despite the past few years kind of being lackluster you have marvel you have avatar which is one of the biggest franchises at least with the money you know what I'm saying? Between two movies, the thing made $4 billion. It's crazy. And you have Coco, which is another big franchise. <laughs> um, and plus, we have a huge Latin population out here in California. So it's just, it's it's going to print money, you know? Um, but what do you have for Tomorrowland? 
you know, what so, IP can you put in there? So I can see why Disney's like prioritizing the stuff where they can put the big IP at, over Tomorrowland because Tomorrowland doesn't have any of that, you know? Well, I have two IPs in mind. The one I already said was Tron, right? But I have another IP that you can get rid of Star Tours because seriously, like I said, what the great thing about Tomorrowland is you have a variety of type of attractions. Like I said, you have a dark shooter ride, you have a simulator, you have an outdoor, you know, you drive the car ride and you have a coaster, right? You have a variety of attractions, which is fantastic. Yeah. But here's another IP you could put in there because it is Disney owned. And I was reading a few, at least a few years ago that there was supposed to be a, like a, like a new like remake of this movie flight of the navigator. Oh, that's dope. Oh, there's gonna be a remake of that. Well, that that's what I was reading. was like that. Um, uh, was it Bryce? Uh, Bryce Howard, Bryce Dallas Howard. I wanted to direct a new Flight of the Navigator movie. Fun, fun fact, real quick. I actually went to uh, nursery school with her. No way. Yeah, I was oh, in nursery man. school with her. Yes, I, old, old, a long time ago. I'm sure she remembers me though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> special access OG. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm sure she remembers me. Special, special access OG. You know what I'm saying? Right? But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fun fact. Oh, but, that, but that's what you get when you when you live in LA. You, you're gonna have, you know, exactly. like my, my, my mom. My mom went to high school with uh, Val Kilmer. No way. Yeah, but it's crazy. It's crazy. But go ahead. I do apologize. No, no. So, so you can take out Star Tours and you can put in a flight, a flight of navigator like uh, ride in that same building, right? I mean, you don't have to re demo it. You can just really utilize the same building. You know, maybe create the um like like the ride vehicles to look different to like the like, like the spaceship that's used and then it, the pilot be the like the little droid that is like that's um i forgot what his name is but like the little droid pilot inside yeah. the craft you know you have you can have him be that you can have a flight of navigator attraction which is still that'd be dope right that'd be dope you know? that'd be dope there, there's options there there's options if they want to do it you but, know so but, we'll see but it's, it's, it's hard though it's hard because i was gonna say it's hard because of like the, the style you got to get right for Tomorrowland, the type, the IP you got to have in there because IP sells, right? Yeah, and they're you obsessed know? with it right now. That's the direction of the industry, you know. But that's the weird thing though is that Wiser, because I was watching you guys' video, um, the last video you guys did with uh, you and George about, you know, the Renaissance stuff not being really included into the Disney, at least domestic Disney parks, right? Is Wiser some IP that Disney? focuses on and then not others like for example the tree house we got right, right. It's, it's it's inspired off the swiss the family swiss Robinson's <laughs> tree house so i don't know and then they were going to do the disney plus show then they canceled it so i'm like they're kind of going back to these older ieps sort of so i'm like i'm not sure what their thought process in some of this it's, it's weird it's weird i feel like the whole thing with the tree house was like we like swiss family yeah and we got this Disney Plus show coming, so we want to keep our options open, but we don't want to commit, commit. Right, you know? yeah, exactly. So we're going to be inspired by, basically, you know, uh, friends with benefits, right? You're not quite... <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're not, not quite... You don't want to be in a relationship necessarily, but you're dabbling, you know? Yeah, you're dabbling. <laughs> <laughs> so he does, he dabbles. <laughs> <laughs> dabbles dabbles you know so it, it's interesting we'll see what happens you know it's, it's gonna be fascinating so we'll see brother but uh, a fun conversation oh, today um it looks like you were uh yeah <laughs> I, I, I was trying to get like a like it's just fucking dark in here dude like okay there we go there you go that works but um Fun conversation, uh, Mr. Weba. We got to get you back on again very, very soon and talk Absolutely. shop with you. The Italiano comes back from his first cruise. Look at this guy, man. He's like the Jay Z of Diz Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Just I like, know. Uh, you know, I just, know, man. Just, like this, like it's like freaking twentieth vacations, man. Jeez. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, he's li he is living his best life, 100. percent But he comes back in a few days, and then he'll be. And then once he comes back, he'll be here for a few days, and then he'll. Um, and then he goes back on another cruise, woo, you know, for another week or so. So, um, but yeah, when he gets back, we'll do we'll do a show together and stuff. But uh, Mr. Weba, if you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media, sir. Absolutely, OG55. Thank you so much for having me on. This was a great discussion. Uh, it's always fun to talk about this stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can find me, uh, Mr. Weba. You can find me on um, Twitter, which I. I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really active uh, active on it anymore. You can find me on Instagram, uh, and it's going to be Mr. Weber at Webslinger760. 
There it is. There he is. There he is. And uh, yeah, comment down below with all your questions, comments, opinions on everything we talked about today. Um, Disneyland Resort, you know, how can they how can they attract more of that tourism market? Uh, Tomorrowland, DCA, Pandora, all that good stuff. We would love to hear from you. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful day.